G'day, my name is Matt Fratt and this is Ascension Presents. Over the next two videos, I wanna share with you how I went from being an agnostic to a Catholic. It's great to have you here. Um, many of you have asked me in the comments section, can I share my story with you and just tell you a little bit about how I became a Christian? I thought I would do that, but it's gonna be a long story, so I thought I'd break it up over two videos. I was raised in a Catholic family um, my mum was Catholic at least, my dad wasn't. Um, my grandma was a super Catholic, beautiful woman she was, Margie Harris. Um, she, uh, she'd often sit there with her leg up because she had sores on it, you know, and in front of her she'd have her rosary beads and her prayer books and her murder mystery novels. She was a lovely woman. My mum would take us to Mass every week even though I didn't want to go. It was boring, you see. Boring. I didn't like going. Uh, sometimes I'd be over friends' houses, eating Fruit Loops, watching cartoons, and uh, you know, mum would come to the door, come on Matt, we're going to Mass, and I thought, that's not cool, I'm not interested, but okay, I have to. She'd take me to the doors in front of the church, and she'd always say the same thing, you know, be a good boy, don't be loud, don't annoy your sister. God bless my mum, she had to put up with a lot with the likes of me. Anyway. The priests were fine, I had good experiences of the priests, they were lovely. The congregation were okay, but don't you understand, I didn't care. I didn't care to be there. Sometimes I say I rejected the faith of my childhood. I don't know if that's true though, because in order to reject something, don't you have to first own it first? And I'm not sure I really did own the faith. It was never my own. Um, I was given mixed messages, I think. Some people would say things like, it's very important to pray, but then they never prayed. Some people said, uh, save sex till marriage, and then others said, do what makes you happy. Well, some people would say, hell doesn't exist, the church doesn't teach that anymore. And then, then other faithful Catholics would say, no, hell does exist, and you'll probably go there, Matt. No, they didn't say that, but you know, there's a chance that I'll go there. Mixed messages, wasn't that interested. So I thought, God probably doesn't exist, you see. The way I remember thinking about it is, if you journal, if you write in your journal, you might feel better. That's just because you got your thoughts out. Well, prayer's sort of like that. You're not you're not really sort of communicating with some deity. You just feel better because you think that there's some sugar daddy up in the clouds, right? Uh, who's gonna give you a theme park when you're dead. Just be a good boy. That's how I saw it, do you understand? I didn't think it was true. Now, I wasn't an atheist because an atheist, well, the word, the term atheist hadn't yet become a shorthand way of saying I'm more intelligent than you. Right, so I'm like, oh, I'm agnostic, I guess. That sounds kind of weird and spiritual. So I'm agnostic, I don't know if he, she, it, whatever exists. Well, I'll never forget one day, a good friend of mine sat me down because she was going through a lot in her life. Um, family life wasn't great, and she was actually contemplating ending her life. I was 12 years old at the time, and I was doing everything I could to tell her that she had some reason to live, that she was lovely, I told her. I really liked her anyway, and she'd go to high school next year, which would be fun, and then we'd get our driving license, and then we'd graduate high school, and she could go to uni if she wanted to, or she could just get a job, maybe get married, you know? But every time I said something, you know, you'll get married, you have a, you know, she'd look at me and she'd say, then what? And I'd be like, well, then you have kids. But then what? Eventually I said, well, you'll be, a, you know, then, I mean, eventually you'll die. I mean, we all, we all die. And she looked at me as if to say, do you see my point? And I saw her point. It fell on me like a ton of bricks, man. I, it just knocked me for six, as we say in Australia. I had nothing to say to my friend that day, nothing. And it occurred to me that if atheism is true, then this is a pretty bloody shabby existence we all live in. We all walk around pretending that we have some deep meaning to our lives, but there really is no meaning. Uh, we distract ourselves, walking towards the void that will soon engulf us. Now that's depressing. Now, I'm not saying it's depressing, therefore atheism mustn't be true. Maybe atheism is true and we just have to learn to accept that it's super depressing. But I didn't have any good reasons to think God didn't exist, don't you see? They weren't great. I would say things like, well, the only reason you're a Christian is you were raised a Christian. That's the genetic fallacy, that doesn't work, you know? Or I'd say, well, you just believe in God because it makes you feel good. All right, well, even if that's the point, you know, a blanket makes me feel good. It doesn't mean it's not there. I didn't have any good reasons, you know? I'm not saying there aren't sophisticated arguments for atheism. I just hadn't heard any, nor was I putting any forth. Well, when I was about 17 years old, my mum came home from Mass and invited me to World Youth Day in Rome. World Youth Day, I since learned, 
uh, was a gathering of the Pope and millions of young people. But when she said Rome, I wasn't sure what World Youth Day was or where Rome was. I thought maybe this is a trick. Maybe Rome is some little obscure town in South Australia, population 42, you know? So I'm like, Rome where? Like, and she's like, Italy, you idiot. Oh good, yes, no, I'd like to go, I think, you know? Well, anyway, I got packing and I was going to Rome. But I remember the day before leaving, you know, I said to my best mate in uh, social studies class, I think, I said, I'm not going for Jesus or any of that rubbish. I'm just going to have a good time, meet some ladies. Little did I know that ladies didn't care about me, but that's okay, I had a good time anyway. But that just goes to show I wasn't interested. I didn't believe in Jesus or any of this stuff. So I'm about to board this airplane, right, in Sydney to fly to Rome. And what happened next was, was pretty incredible and would change my life forever. But for that, you're going to have to wait a week. Isn't that annoying? This is what watching 24 and Lost was like every single episode. But unlike 24 and Lost, hopefully what I have to say will actually be somewhat satisfying because I think it's a pretty beautiful story. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. Please leave me a comment below if you want. You can even write a, uh, a question for me by writing hashtag AskMattFrad and maybe I'll respond to you in an upcoming episode. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want, at MattFrad, and I'll be happy to respond to you there. Thank you so much for watching.